In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your favorite photos and memories into amazing customizable 3D printed picture boxes. These work great as very personalized gifts or even just a unique way to display your favorite memories in your own home. These 3D printable pictures are actually called lithophanes and they're really cool because when you shine a light behind the lithophane, it displays and illuminates the details of your favorite pictures. Whether it's for a wedding or a family portrait or even your favorite pets, this picture box is a great option for just about any occasion. Now in step one for making your own light box, we need to think about how many photos we actually need to turn into lithophanes. I have two different options for the light box. I have one that uses five and has a lithophane on the top, and then one that uses four and just has a normal black top. Once you know how many you're going to need, you can start selecting your pictures. And the first thing we're going to talk about is selecting the right photos because some actually do work better than others. I've printed quite a few of these by now and I've noticed that the pictures that seem to work best with these picture boxes are very high resolution portrait style pictures that don't have any super really bright or dark background to the pictures themselves. Some of these lower resolution or really bright or dark pictures might look really artistic but sometimes they just don't transfer over well to lithophanes, so keep that in mind when picking your pictures. Once we have selected all of our pictures, we're going to need to format these pictures so that they fit into the picture box frame. So to do that, we're going to go over to lunapic.com. It is a free photo editing site that has a lot of wonderful tools that are really helpful to use. And we're gonna start by going to upload and uploading our photos that we want to convert into lithophanes that fit in the picture box. Next, you're gonna to navigate to the photo you want to edit first and open it and it will open up here in Lunapic. So next we're going to need to go to the crop tool. It's that top left. And once you click on crop, it will open the crop tools and menu. And the tool that we want to be using is the square crop tool. So at the top, click on the square and it will drag a square onto your picture. If it's a large or high resolution picture, you might need to zoom in and out. I use control and the mouse wheel to zoom in and out to actually see the full picture so that you can align the square exactly where you want. Once the alignment and the picture looks good to you, go ahead and click on the crop button and it will crop the picture so that it is just the square. Look it over one last time to make sure it is exactly the way you want it. And then you can either click download now at the top right or right click on the picture and go to save as and save it in the location that you'd like to save it in. And you're just gonna repeat this process for all of the pictures that you wanna put in your actual picture box. So once all of the pictures are square and ready to go, we are going to turn them into lithophanes. But before we dive into converting to lithos, if you wanted to make a custom picture, such as a wedding announcement for the top, or maybe even a name for say a dog, you would go to canva.com. Once Canva opens up, you have the option to start a new project and you can create your own logos or your own pictures. What I did was I just started a new project and added a few wedding related elements to this picture along with the name and the date and then I would export this as a picture. I also made one with a paw print and the name Sunny on it and also like the last one just exported it as a picture and then converted it into a lithophane which is what we'll get to next. To turn these pictures into actual lithophanes we're going to go to itslitho.com. There's a few sites that convert images into lithophanes but this is definitely my favorite. Next we're going to click on get started and when you click get started it will probably show you some of the new features that they've recently come out with just go ahead and close it and then we're going to navigate to the upload tab and once you're in upload you're going to actually click the upload button and then you're going to navigate where you stored your square cropped pictures and you're going to open any of them really it doesn't really matter at this point we're going to do this to all of them so just go ahead and click on one when you see that it's loaded we're going to move over to the edit tab at the top so go ahead and click edit you should see the picture that you uploaded in the previous tab but now it has converted the picture into a black and white version and at the top there are some different options for how you want your picture to look i usually just leave it on the default luminance option 
I would recommend just playing around with the different options to get the picture the way you want it to look. And then once you are happy with how it looks, we're going to move over to the model tab. When you open the model tab, it should import the picture that we just edited and actually turn it into a lithophane. And this is where you can alter the settings to make your lithophane exactly the way you want it. And when I designed the picture box, I wanted to design it so that it kept most of the default settings that this its litho site generates. So we're going to keep it at a width and height of 100 millimeters. So you're going to keep all of the shape options as default. There are two options that we do want to change though, and that is in the frame options. We're going to change the thickness to one millimeter and the depth to three millimeters. We're gonna leave the angle at 45 degrees though. Double check to make sure all of the settings match what I have in the picture here. And once all the settings are correct, look over the lithophane to make sure you're happy with it and that it looks like it'll print well. And then you're gonna to wanna to go to the bottom right and click download. It will bring up a few different options. The top one is lithophane, then it's followed by lithophane only, then attribute only, and then color lithophane. If you do the top lithophane, it'll download the attribute and everything else with it. I actually only want the lithophane STL so that I can import it into my slicer and print it. So I'm going to click lithophane only and then I'll navigate to where I want to save it, name it what I want, and then go ahead and click save. Once you have that first picture converted and downloaded, you're just going to repeat the same process for the rest of the pictures and then we'll move on into actual printing. So I'm not gonna go into great detail about how to optimally print lithophanes because there's a lot of great resources online such as this resource from the It's Litho website. I'll link to this in the description. This site even includes printing profiles for slicers like Cura to actually print lithophanes. So definitely use the available profiles and read over the available information. But in a nutshell, using smaller layer heights and printing at slower speeds are gonna make a huge difference in the quality of your lithophanes. I also always print these with a brim so they don't topple over during printing. And I included a 3MF for my printing profile if you're interested in using what I have for my settings. The one thing I will say about 3D printing this lithophan picture box is that you really want to make sure the tolerances on your printer are dialed in really nicely. The top of the picture box frame and the base are supposed to fit together really tightly for a secure fit so you can carry it around and so it doesn't pop off and break. I'll include a link in the description that is a guide to dialing in your tolerances but you really want to make sure everything's dialed in before printing this thing. The filament that I use to print these white lithos is this white overture PLA filament you definitely don't have to use this exact one, but it's relatively inexpensive, seems to print pretty easy, and really seems to bring out the details well. After you've printed all of your pictures, it's time to print the actual frame of the picture box itself. I included several different files for the picture box frame so that you can have a few different options. I included one that uses a plug-in dimmable LED light, and I also included one that is battery powered so that you don't have to plug anything in. I have a couple different options for the top of the frame. One includes a space to have a picture in it, and the other does not, and it just sits on top of the rest of the pictures in the frame. You don't have to print the frame in black, but I usually do, and for the frame, I use the same Overture PLA filament that I showed before, but it's black instead of white. Once you know what frame you want to print for your picture box, go ahead and print those out. I included a 3MF for this as well, but you can easily print it on other slicers too. If you chose to print the top of the frame that includes a space for a litho, you will probably need to remove the supports so that the picture will fit in the provided slot. For both base options, there are posts that come up with slots that the lithophanes should just slide right into. Once everything is installed, it's time to put the top of the frame on, and like I mentioned before, make sure those tolerances are dialed in because it's a bit of a tight fit. You're just going to align the posts to the little holes that are in the top, and once you line them up correctly, you just squeeze them together and they should pop in place. And if you printed the top with the slot in it, go ahead and install your picture into the top. Okay, now it's time to add the light to the bottom of the box so that you can illuminate the lithos. So for that, we're going to use this Himalayan salt lamp light bulb base. This is the one I use here just because you get a two pack for relatively inexpensive and it fits the LED light that we're going to use and it also has the dimmable switch on it, which is nice. The only downside to using this base is you have to free the actual light holder from the base itself. And to do that, I just use two pliers 
corners and twist in opposite directions and eventually it'll snap and you just repeat this process until the actual light bulb base is separated from the plastic base. I know it's not ideal but it seems to be the only pre-wired dimmable light option that works well with the base that I could find. Next we're going to install the light bulb that goes onto our dimmable base. I use this bulb here because it's a small size, it's very bright and it works well with the dimmable switch on the light base. Once you install the bulb, turn it on and check to make sure that it works before we install it and now it's time to actually install it into the picture box. This part's pretty simple, you just push and twist the light base with the bulb on it so that it slides into the pre-made slot at the base of the light box until it slides all the way in. And there is a built-in channel in the base that you can run the wire through once it's installed so that the picture box sits flat on whatever you want to store it on. Once everything is installed, be sure to turn it on one last time and just check. And if everything is installed correctly, you should have yourself a wonderfully customized lithophane picture box. If you're using the base with the battery setup, the installation and assembly is a little different. This base uses these little puck lights that are battery powered and remote operated. The setup is kind of nice because there are no wires or anything to plug in and these puck lights are pretty bright and you have some really cool options as far as changing the color or adding strobe effects or things like that. But to start you'll just need to slide the puck lights into the designated slots in the base. I like to check to make sure that everything's working before I install the lithophanes. Once you know everything is working, it's time to install the lithophanes into the slots. It's the exact same process as the dimmable light version. You just slide the lithophanes into the slots, and then when they're installed, you just install the top of the box that you chose to print. And then when everything is assembled correctly, it should be ready to go. Like I mentioned before, this option is really nice because you don't have to mess with any wires or plug anything in, and you get some extra features like changing the colors and added light effects. But there is a downside, and that is that these batteries don't really seem to last very long with these puck lights and it's just never going to be quite as bright as the plug-in version. There are probably details that I could have gone a little more into in this tutorial but for the most part that's all you'll need to know and need to make your own custom and personalized 3D printed lithophane picture boxes. Let me know in the comments if there is something you wanted me to go over more or if you wanted to learn more about something and definitely let me know what kind of picture box you would want to make. We have more tutorial videos like this coming out so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe and I will see you in the next one.